When did you last get an email from your friend Hillary Clinton? Oh my gosh, uh, an email. I don't know, somewhere around 10, maybe 2010. 2010. Right. So, um, j just, just maybe. Just, I don't know. You for a while you were in pretty regular email. I contact. deleted them, however. Yeah. Yeah. For a while you were in pretty regular email contact with her. Just describe like how she is as an emailer. Does she answer quickly, long, short? Will she sometimes, if you send her an email, call her back instead? What are her practices as an emailer? Uh, kind of short and sweet, really. Um, we did a lot of our stuff on the phone, uh, mostly, but uh, she emailed short things. She's very good on the happy birthdays, happy Mother's Day, those kind of things. Right. Patty, you, you, went, you lived through a, a bunch of campaigns, or a couple campaigns with her, um, and have seen her in various situations of stress and pressure. This one, she had various camps within her organization. Some wanted her to get out earlier. Some wanted her to wait. Some wanted her to do interviews uh, rather than doing a press conference. How does she think about those choices when she's confronted with a situation like this and she has various tactical options on how to defuse it? How does her mind work as she addresses that? Well, you know, this is a person who likes to be prepared and do her homework. So I, you know, personally, I would have liked to have seen her come out last week as opposed to yesterday. Uh, but I think this is somebody who likes to be prepared. And it was a busy week for her yesterday. She had a lot of other, I mean, last week, she had a lot of other things going on. Uh, the 20th anniversary of her speech in Beijing, right. uh, the UN speech. So, but I think... Uh, you know, knowing her the way I know her, I think really what sort of delayed it, you know, for the eight days was really making sure uh, she was prepared, all the T's were crossed let, and all me, the I's dotted. Let me just ask you, like, in a more specific way this question, right? If she is being, ca she's faced with a choice in this situation where one group of advisors says, you should go do for interviews with, with, with do, find a couple TV reporters who we trust, who we think are, will be friendly, let's go do that. Or go stand in front of a giant scrum of reporters. Those are your choices, right? How does she make that decision? How does she calculate what she's more comfortable with? Look, she likes to listen to all ideas, weigh all the pros and cons of the ideas, and ultimately I think she relies on her gut. And you hit the nail on the head. What is she most comfortable with? She's the one who makes a decision. And, uh, you know, I think yesterday she did, she did, she did well. I thought she was poised. I thought she was, uh, she looked good. I thought she was measured. I thought she answered a lot more questions than I thought she was going to answer. Um, I think she did a good job. She did, been, she did what she needed to do. She's been through a lot with the press over the years, as you know. Um, there have been articles mm -hmm. in the last couple days talking about uh, her extreme distrust of the media, how she thinks the media is unfair. These are not new themes. Uh, when one says that she really does not um, like the press and doesn't think the press treats her fairly, is that overstated or is that how she feels? I think uh, that's a little overstated. I think, you know, for instance, at the State Department, she got along very well with, with the press. I meant I the political press. <laughs> right. That's what I was getting to. I think when the press is covering her on her issues and what she stands for and, you know, what her vision is, uh, I think she gets along with them great. I think when they play gotcha and they try and uh, really play up the political aspect, I think she probably gets annoyed, as many of us do. Patty, Patty I agree with you that, that she did all right yesterday, but she seemed... Uh, she didn't look like she's the happiest woman in the world to be there. That was not, she didn't do that, that was not the face of, of joy that she had on. I'm curious, if you think back to the 2008 campaign, um, were there other, were, did she, can you even think of a, a situation analogous to the situation? Mark and I are struggling today to try to remember whether we could even think of a time when she did a big, high-pressure, high-profile press availability like that in 2008. All right, you're putting me on the spot. I'm trying to think. Um... Well, first of all, let me just say I agree with you. I don't, you know, that is not her favorite thing to do. Right. You know, obviously, she, I think she would have much preferred to have talked about, you know, women and girls and the progress they've made in the last 20 years since her speech in Beijing. Um, that was not the case. But I'm trying to think, I think the most analogous probably was not in 08, but when she first announced her candidacy in 2000, when we had 
press from not just all over the country, but all over the world. Uh, you know, that first reporter, the Turkish reporter, reminded me right. of our, you know, one of the questions we got was from Japan when she r right. first ran for Senate. Patty, uh, Patty, I think that's probably the most analogous. We got to go in a second, so I just want a, a one phrase answer here. After that, is your sense from watching her and, and from knowing her, do you think she's relieved after that press conference or still anxious about the situation? I think she did it, it's done, and we're moving on. I think that's what she's thinking.